Find more podcasts like this one by going to rustymikeradio.com. You're listening to the Sports Rabbi, hosted by Josh Hallickman. All right, we're back here with the Sports Rabbi, Josh Hallickman. Uh, very pleased to welcome in Coach Bobby Bowden, one of the greatest college football coaches, uh, really, of all time. Uh, Coach at Florida State University for many, many years. And it's a pleasure to have him here on the show. How are you doing today, Coach Bowden? Fine. I was surprised when they said I was going to get a call from Jerusalem, but I'm more than pleased to do it. I really appreciate that. Coach Bowden, you came up with a great book uh, recently, Call to Coach, Reflections on Life, Faith, and Football, put out by Howard Books, which is a division of uh, Simon & Schuster. Uh, I really, really enjoyed the book because not only did it talk about your history as a football coach, but it talked about the person who is uh, Coach Bobby Bowden and and the values that you have. Uh, Talk a little bit about uh, why you wrote the book. Well, uh, uh, I, I, I coached for 57 years, and, uh, you know, after, after you've coached that long, you've got a lot of stories to tell. you learned a lot of stuff that, that, that you think will help, especially help these young people. And uh, so they wanted to name the book Call to Coach. That was my son's idea, and that was fine with me because that was my thinking, is that I was called to coach. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm of the belief that, that – God put us all here for a reason, and he has a plan for everybody, mm-hmm. and that he wanted me to coach. So that's what the book is about, and it's, and it's telling experiences that happened to me uh, in my years of coaching, you know, working with these young men. Mm-hmm. And that, it, was, it was so evident throughout the book at, at how much you care about the, the athletes and the, uh, the students and, and the people that you work with day in, day out. Talk a little bit about that as a coach, as a, as a college coach, what it's like to be as a mentor to those uh, to those athletes. Well, I think you nearly have to take the approach that they're your children. You know, these these boys are 17, 18, 19, 20 years of age, and they're, they're away from home. They're not under the arms of their mother and daddy anymore, you know it? Mm-hmm. And, and as a football coach, I felt like I had to play that role. Mm-hmm. And so I tried to treat them. Like I would my own sons, and uh, you know, and, I, and 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 get them to to, to do the right thing. And uh, I even used to take them to church uh, over here in mm-hmm. America. I would take them to a black church, all of them, and then I'd take them to a white church, all of them, mm-hmm. just to show them that what no matter what their race, they were welcome here. You know, and uh, I, I just felt like that's way that you know, and I always talked to their parents to ask them if that would be okay for me to do that. And they all agreed, you know, because parents, uh, again, the children are away from them for the first time, and they like to know that somebody's taking care of them. That's, that's 100% true. And you know what was interesting in the book I found, and I always questioned myself, why didn't Coach Bowden go to coach in the NFL? Why, why did somebody <laughs> like yourself, why did somebody like yourself stay in the college ranks for so many years? And, and obviously a success uh, up and down. And uh, you tell the story uh, with Dan Marino. So talk a little bit about that. But why did well, coach? I, I, I was offered opportunities several times to coach in an NFL. I, I'm talking about as a head football coach. Right. And uh, I, but I just it, there's a, there's so much difference between professional football and college football, uh, where they're 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 amateurs. They're not pros. And everything in professional football is built around money, you know, and uh, they respond to money. They're motivated by money, whereas in college, uh, that's not true. And I just, I'd rather coach under that atmosphere than I had the professional atmosphere. Mm-hmm. No, I, I hear you. And it, it's also so much, I, I don't, it's more rewarding to some extent also, as you mentioned earlier, yeah. just touching the, the touching the lives of these, uh, these athletes and, and, and kids at the time, and you know, yeah. talking about that a little bit, uh, Coach Bowden, how much yeah. how much connection do you have with some of those uh, those players that you you uh, coached for so many years right now? Well, I, I still hear from them. In fact, we have a reunion every June with the first college team that I coached. Uh, now those boys are seventy five, seventy six 
years of age. <laughs> I was only 25 when I was a head football coach. And a lot of my players had been to the service, and they were some of them were my age, you know. And so we, we meet every year. Uh, the, the first weekend of June, on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we meet. We'll do it again this summer. And the boys keep coming back. And we'll lose, you know, we'll have somebody missing every year that passed away. But, uh, but, but, but that's something we, we've always done. And, uh, the, the, the kids, the boys that are in pro football, a lot of times they'll call me or I'll be in town and we'll call them and we'll talk, you know. But you know, uh, here's something very interesting. Uh, after coaching all these years, I get letters from boys I had 40 years ago, mm-hmm. boys I had 30 years ago, boys I had 50 years ago. And none of them mention football. None of them say, oh, boy, didn't we have a good time. Oh, did we have a great time. They don't talk about that. They all say, thank you for what you told me about life. You know, I'm now, I'm now married and have two children graduating from college, and I remember what you said about this and I said about that. So you, you realize what's really important in life. That's right. You know, speaking about marriage, you talk about earlier in the book your marriage to, of course, uh, Ann Estock, and uh, they said it wasn't going to last, but uh, I'm pretty sure it did, and you had quite the prolific family <laughs> from oh, from yeah, you and yeah. your wife. Talk a little yeah. bit about uh, your your family and your wife and uh, your, your sons and your, your you know. Well, uh-huh. well, Ann and I will be married uh, 63 years uh, in April. Wow. And uh, and and we we were young when we got married. Ann was 16, I was uh, 19, and uh, we had six children, and uh, then they, and now we have 21 grandchildren and five great grandchildren. But us being young like we were, we had our children young and really had a good time raising them, you know, and spending time with them. The five, now we had two girls and 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 four boys. Now the girls were the oldest and the youngest. My oldest daughter was a cheerleader in college. Uh, my uh, youngest daughter, she was a cheerleader and married one of my football players. Mm-hmm. My oldest daughter married a coach. He's coaching high school ball now in Georgia. My oldest son, he went into business. And my and Tommy was the head coach at Clemson University mm-hmm. at Tulane. And then Terry was head coach at Auburn and Sanford University. And now is the head coach at North Alabama University. My son Jeffrey is is, is coaching with him. Mm-hmm. Of course, we're on here with Coach Bobby Bowden uh, with a great book called To Coach, Reflections on Life, Faith, and Football, put up by Howard Books, Division of Simon & Schuster. Honored to have him on the program. Of course, Bobby, you uh, won two national championships, 1993 and 1999. Talk a little bit about the, uh, you know, just climbing that mountain and, and finally make, you know, hitting that first championship and, of course, wondering if you're ever going to make it to that second one and then you make it to that second championship. Talk a little bit about yeah. you know, what it takes to be a winner. Well, you know, it was, it was amazing. When I was at Florida State, we went about five or six years, either two, three, or four in the nation. And it was kind of like, well, you just can't win a national championship, you know. And then we finally won it. And then the next four or five years, we'd still come out second, a third, a fourth, never, never any lower than fourth. And, uh, and we won our second national championship in 99. Now, the, the, probably the biggest feat that we had here, which I didn't even realize at the time, is we went 14 years in a row, winning 10 or more games and, uh, winning, uh, uh, being in the top four for 14, four or closer, in, in the in the in the in the, uh, the top in the uh, well the, the, the top one two three or four for right. fourteen straight years huh. you know and I think probably the closest to that is maybe somebody eight years or something like that so mm-hmm. if we were just very fortunate we had a good program Florida Florida's a great place to live it's easy easy to attract good players there and uh, and so we were we were very fortunate. What was what were some of the defining matches? What were the defining games that you had as a coach that you finally said, "Wow, we won the big one." Yeah, well, when we beat uh, we beat Nebraska for the first national championship, mm-hmm. and that was always big. And you know, they won they won three out of four national championships the next four years. Yes, they did. And then, and then we beat Virginia Tech for a national championship, mm-hmm. where we we were we were the only team that's ever picked number one in the nation before the season. And we were number one every week during the season, and we ended up number one. We were the only school able to do that. 
Right. And um, and so it, it's it's uh, there's one thing that, that's pretty true. It's harder to get to the top than stay there. You know, a lot of teams get up there, mm-hmm. but they don't stay. You know, and we stayed up there for about 14 years, so uh, we had a lot of, had a lot of time, a lot of good time. You looked at that 1999 team. Uh, Chris Winkie was the quarterback. Uh, Sebastian Janikowski, the kicker. That was a qu- quite a combination, uh, Bobby. Well, all it really was. Janikowski is probably one of the best kickers to ever come through American football. He was born and raised in Poland, mm-hmm. and uh, he came to America to play soccer. And uh, they got him to come out for the high school football team, and that was the story of his life. He became a great kicker. And uh, in, in professional football, he's he's already tied the longest field goal, which is 63 yards. And then one game last, a couple of weeks ago, he broke a record. He kicked three and one game over 50 yards. Right. You know, so he was he was such a great kicker. Uh, Chris Winkie was a, young, a man that we signed back in 19 about 1990, and then he decided to play professional football. So he went into professional football for five years. And he he saw that he wasn't going to make it to the big time, so he decided to come back and play college football. Mm-hmm. So he was 25 years of age when he came here, and of course he took us to three national championship playoffs. We only won we only won one of them, but he took us to three. It's quite unbelievable, uh, Coach Bowden. Who are some of the biggest influences on you as uh, as you know as a coach who are? Yeah, well, the biggest one was Bear Bryant. Paul Bear Bryant, who mm-hmm. coached at the University of Alabama, and I was I was I was uh, I was coaching at a small college, Sanford University, which is only 50 miles away. When Bear came to Alabama and built that, he built about four or five national champions there, and I was able to watch him and copy a lot of things he did, and 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 learn a lot of the drills that he did, and he helped me a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Coach Bowden, one of the favorite uh, parts of the book that I, I read is uh, the chapter Wide Right, but really leading uh, into page 151, 152, where you talk about what it takes to be a champion. And, uh, and the list is just, you know, make good grades and go to class, project yeah. a positive image in the community, stay out of trouble, stay away from drugs and alcohol, sell on our strength and conditioning program. The list is, you know, on and on and on. And then, you, of course, you have the, the uh, first Bible song that you sang as a child, which uh, is one of my favorites because, of course, I'm Joshua as well. Joshua fought the Battle of Jericho. Oh, really? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. We used to hear, we used to get all those songs. Uh, Ann and I, Ann and I, of course, we we met in in our church. Mm -hmm. Uh, She moved, I I lived in Birmingham, Alabama. She moved there when she was 14. Uh, And and we both went to Ruth Hamer Baptist Church there in uh, Birmingham. Mm-hmm. And she was in the choir, and I wasn't. But anyway, that's where we met. And uh, but gosh, we used to get all those good songs, you know, old rugged cross and in the garden, and all those, all of them based on Israel. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's why we enjoyed our visit. Ann and I enjoyed our visit to Israel last summer, getting to see uh, Golgotha, you know, and getting to see the the, the grave and getting to see. Oh, so many things there that we had studied all of our life. Right. So talk, talk a little bit about your trip to Israel last year. I mean, it must have been, you said it was a trip of a lifetime. You mentioned it at the end of the book that you were planning the trip. And I remember I asked, uh, of course, Kim uh, if, if you had gone. And she said, yeah, he had gone. So just make sure you speak to uh, Coach <laughs> to Coach Bowden about that. So yeah, talk talk yeah. a little bit about more about your trip to Israel. Of course, we're broadcasting here from Jerusalem, Israel, and, and everybody wants yeah. to hear about that. So go right ahead. Oh, man. Well, we had a, a, a minister here who had retired, Jim Henry, and uh, he got up a, a, a group to travel. And, of course, he would take me and me and Ann to try to attract people to come. So we had a, we had a couple of buses, buses mm-hmm. full, and we flew over uh, to Tel Aviv and uh, went down to Joppa. Mm-hmm. Uh, where you know I can fulfill in so much of the Bible story of of, of, of Jonah, you know, and mm-hmm. Joppa, and then on up. Then we went up to Caesarea, mm-hmm. and I got to stand where Paul stood and see the the many sights there. And you know, and then we went over to uh, went over to the Sea of Galilee, you know, right. to Tiberius. Of course, stayed there a couple of nights and got out on the Sea of Galilee, and and then. 
oh gosh, went all up north there, and then then came down through the Golan Heights, you know, and then mm-hmm. then we went to uh, the uh, Jordan River, mm-hmm. and everybody waded out into the river where we felt like uh, Jesus was uh, baptized, you know. That's a big thing right. to us, of course. No, hundred percent. Uh, then we then we went down on down the coast down to uh, Jericho, went mm-hmm. to Jericho, and then we went on down to uh, Jordan, went to Petra, uh-huh. you know, and, and 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 toured that, and stayed at this at the Dead Sea overnight over in uh, Jordan. Mm-hmm. That was a beautiful area. And then on down, it came up. Down, down around the Dead Sea and back up towards Israel. And I'm gonna tell you one of the most, let me tell you one of the most inspiring things I've ever seen in my life. After we had been there for about five days and had toured all around the country, and we were down south and coming up towards Jerusalem. Now I'd never been to Jerusalem, and a lot of the people on the bus had never been to Jerusalem. And as we as we came up those mountains, fixing to go into, fixing to see Jerusalem for the first time. They started, they played that record, Jerusalem. You may, I don't know if you know that song or not, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. And boy, I, we, we just got tears in our eyes, you know. Mm-hmm. Then came over the hill and there, there, there the city was, back over there on another mountain. It was just, that was the most, most wonderful sights I've ever seen. Yeah, it's, it's quite amazing. Coach Bowden, it's, it, for myself, I live a uh, stone's throw away from the old city. And, yeah, and uh, you know, I could I could walk about five minutes outside of my front door, and I have a beautiful view of the old city. So I know exactly oh, what you man. say because I feel that every day when I wake up and I can walk outside and just breathe the air here in Jerusalem, yeah, I feel yeah. I, I I feel it. It's uh, it's something very very special. So I know exactly what you're what you're talking about. And before we finish off, Coach Bowden, of course, call to Coach uh, your book, Reflections on Life, Faith, and Football. How important was your faith? Uh, as a person and as as a football man and uh, and and you know just for the uh, the common person, you know yeah, how yeah. important is their is their faith? Well, my my faith was number one. Uh, when I when I would talk to these youngsters, these boys that I coached, or or somebody else's son, I would talk to I always talk to them about getting their priorities in order. And you want to be successful, get your priorities in order. You know. And I said, I said, your priorities, number one, is God. And number two is your family. Then number three is your education. I said, you got to get that education because you can take that to the grave with you. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so anyway, my faith was, is the most important thing in the world to me. And it's good because, you know, going through life, you're going to have problems. You're going to have problems. Of course, y'all, y'all can sure over there, you didn't talk about problems because you had to <laughs> fight all your life. You know what? That's what I love. About the Israel, Israel, the, the Israel Jewish people, you mm-hmm. know, and uh, and uh, so you you've got to learn to to fight and overcome these these difficulties, and uh, that's what life is all about. If you can't if you can't fight them and overcome them, you're going to have a hard time making it. You know what? And uh, but that's what makes it makes you a strong. That's what makes you. That's where you gain your character by solving problems. Right. You if you if you can solve problems, you make a lot of money, man. You, know <laughs> <laughs> you make a lot. Everybody be want to hire you if you can solve problems. And uh, and uh, I, I think the basis of that to us, I'm a Christian, comes mm-hmm. from the Bible, you know, which is just built around your country. Right. Just uh, fun, uh, Coach Bowd and a call to Coach Reflections on Life, Faith, and Football put out by Howard Brooks, uh, Division of uh, Simon Schuster. Could you leave us with one final message for the people here in Israel, Coach Bowden? Well, the, the thing I would, you know, if I, if I couldn't live in this country, I'd want to live in that country, you know, because that's where my Savior's from. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I, and I've said this many times, I don't know of any people stronger than the Jewish people. Because of what they have been through for century after century after century, and I still feel they are God's chosen people, mm-hmm. you know. And I, I and I hope and pray they never give up, and I don't think they ever will. <laughs> you know, I think ever I think every one of them would go go to their death fighting, and uh, that's what they've done all their life. And I admire them, and I think they're the t- I think they're the strongest people in the world. Coach Bobby Bowden, an honor and a pleasure for the Sports Rabbi Josh Halleckman to have you on board here uh, on the Sports Rabbi Show. Coach Bowden, I wish you uh, long life, success. Uh, you were 
a marvelous, marvelous coach at Florida State University and, of course, uh, so inspirational to so many people. And, and folks, if you really want to pick up a great book, Call to Coach uh, is just so fabulous. And you can pick that up on my website, www.sportsrabbi.com. Uh, Coach Bowden, thank you so much for joining us again. I appreciate the time, and it was an honor and privilege for me to speak with you today. Hey, well, I, I thank you, and I'm just uh, flattered that you would call me. And you call me any time here. I appreciate that, Coach Bowden. Coach Bobby Bowden, one of the greatest college coaches in all of history, joined us here today. Thank you so much, Coach Bowden. Uh, coming we'll see you, man. Love Take care. Jerusalem. Take care. Take, Bye-bye. Take care. This is Rusty Mike Radio. Online now. www.rustymikeradio.com